Hello everybody and welcome to a special episode of the 2018 year in review and also um, 2019 uh, not really make nine but I'm going to show the yarn I want to use so maybe a yarn nine and right now I have ideas for what I want to do with that yarn but really the point is that I have the yarn picked out that I want to knit this year and we'll see how that goes. Meg okay, so let's start with what I've made in 2018. I have made 21 or 22 things. Um, part of the problem is that two of my projects were not in Ravelry. So um, I actually forgot about them. But then uh, when I was looking at my Instagram, I remembered that I've made a couple pairs of socks for Megwood. Um, in no particular order, I have a pile of stuff right here and I'm going to go through it now. So I showed these on the last episode, and like I said, they look a little bit um, fuzzy, so I'm gonna keep them back here so you can't see that. But the little thrums, um, they tend to get like some fuzz and stuff sticking out like that. So I just need to go through and trim that off. But they're super warm and they're doing exactly what I wanted them to do, which was be very awesome, warm house shoes. So I wear them all the time, so obviously they don't look super great. But these are the Thrum Slippers by The Cozy Knitter. And I'm going to make a pair for Megwin next. Out of some sort of pink yarn? Yeah, Did you say pink? Seal. Okay, pink yarn and I don't know what kind of um, fiber I'll use for the Thrums. Yeah, she's going to make it the same color as me. Yeah. <laughs> So the next one is the Brioche Bulky Hat. I have not really worn this a whole lot. It's from Leftover, or not Leftover. It's from yarn that I got at Tuesday morning. I believe it's Katya um, wool of some sort. It's 100% wool and, you know, it's like different rainbow colors. It reminds me of like 70s kitchens. And I got a bright yellow pom-pom for the top of it, which I still have to attach. It's super warm. It's very thick because it's bulky yarn and it's knit in brioche. So that's sort of what it looks like. Well, obviously that is what it looks like. It's not sort of what it looks like. And then it's going to have... Look at that with the pom-pom, Megwin. Doesn't that look cute? That looks so cute! That's so cute. I don't know why the seal keeps laughing after I don't know. everything he says. But I need to sew this pom pom on so it can be even cuter because you're controlling him and you're crazy. Because everything that everyone says is called a joke. Okay. He hasn't gone to seal <clears> school <throat> yet. Alright. Next up is another pair of thrummed slippers. <laughs> and these are also knit out of um, some briar rose fibers that I got from my mom. Um, so I'm kind of making um, most of that into like hats or slippers or mittens. And then I used a Shetland first clip inside. So this is like a baby Shetland lamb. This is what they look like before they've really been worn. You can see they look a lot nicer. And I think I really got the hang of the thrumming with this one. So... I feel like these are going to wear much better because they're a little bit tighter. Um, and on that one, I didn't kind of snug them up after I did each one. So I think these are going to be really nice and comfy. Um, next up is a sock head hat. And it, this is knit out of No Makers One Fine Gnome in the s'mores colorway. I really love how this striped up. And this one took me... I think almost a year to knit just because I only knit it off and on so I did the brim and then I sort of lost steam on it but I'm glad I picked it back up because it's really surprisingly warm for the weight of it because it contains alpaca. Uh, hey look fellas I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> nice. That'll be what I'll show next. So I like to make my sock head hats not too super slouchy but enough so if show I pull it down and inside. double the brim. It's a really good way to hold it. You don't have to hold the hat, you just have to hold the seal. Oh, I have to hold the seal? Well, I want to show them on. So, yeah, it's got that slouch, just, just but if I were to take it, it off, and trim uh, okay? and double it up, then it's just a normal 
beanie, but I have the a uh, full double layer on my ears. So I'm knitting um, Josh's sock head. That's the bright orange pumpkin pasties from Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits with exactly this same amount of ribbing because um, Josh liked it as well to be able to do the doubling thing for running. You know what I went like with my makeup? <laughs> yeah. I went crazy. And I didn't okay. blend. You and you just rubbed it all over your sleeve. That. Okay. The next one is called the Winter Crown, Winter Crown Hat by <laughs> Lily of the um, Arctic Knitting Podcast. My favorite thing about it is the star on the top. Looks like a starfish. And I knit this out of Christmas on Mars and Vamp Miss. They're both in DK. Um, the Vamp Miss is Woolen Vine Yarn, Smitten DK. And the other one is Moonstone Dye Works. And I believe it's her non-superwash DK base. It was her Christmas colorway last Christmas. Um, although I do believe that Tommy dyed it this Christmas as well. Um, it's really pretty. It's it looks like gray from far away, but you can see it has all these beautiful, subtle speckles of um, forest green and this same, like, maroon color in it, and then also some nice red. So I have enough that I think I could knit another hat that's this as the main color, and then the vamp mist has the contrast. So I definitely plan on doing that at some point um, so that I can have another hat with these beautiful colors. So Winter Crown Hat by Lily of the Arctic Knitting Podcast. It's very fun. You definitely should go knit it. Oops. Continuing with the Lily theme, because I've knit two of her hats, um, I also knit her Lilitin hat. And this one has a snowflake on the top. It sort of looks like a star, but it also looks like a snowflake if you look at the bigger outer part of it, like these being the tips of the snowflake. And it also has a winter scene. So I knit this out of um, Tuka wool fingering in a navy colorway. And then this is a lollipop cabin organic in mountain climbing on Mount Pilchuck. And it was a gift from my friend Gwen. Um, they are both obviously non-superwash fingering yarns. Uh, the only thing I wish for this one is that I had knit it with a larger needle because um, it is a little bit tight on me. So um, it tends to pop on my head up a little bit higher than I want it to because the tuka wool is a little slippery. Um, so I knit the ribbing and the ribbing is at the gauge that I wanted and I probably should have just gone up a needle size for the design portion. It's not that it's terrible, but, um, I may knit another one at some point and do that and maybe reverse, uh, colors. Okay, so here's the hat on. And you can see, like, it's fine right now, but it'll start, like, popping up over my head and then doing this. So, it's just, I think I just needed to work maybe the brim a little bit bigger. That might have helped as well. So, that then when we got into the color work, it was back a little bit further on my head. Or, um, like I said, doing that color work a little bit. Um, looser of a gauge. So definitely going up a needle size would have been good. That said, I do really love it. It's um, super warm and this is the one I reach for when it's really cold outside because I know it's going to keep me super warm. We'll finish hats. So one of my latest finished objects, which I don't believe I've showed at all on the podcast yet. No, I haven't. Um, is my sparkling cider hat. And this one I helped test knit for Kristen. It looks like gray side, gray apple cider with sparkles in it. Okay, sure. Um, 
I test knit this for Kristen, who is the dyer behind Bull and Vine Yarns and who is the host of the Bull and Vine podcast. So it is knit out of her Weep colorway in uh, the Volca base held double with Ghost Lace. So these are little trees that are cabled and I used beads from Hang on, earthfairbeads.com. I believe these are six slash zero seed beads, and they are the, I'll have to put it in the show notes, it's ebony, like clear beads or something like that. So they look very much like abalone colors. So they have that rainbowy metallic look. And I put them on with a crochet hook as I knit. Um, Kristen explains the technique in the pattern, or I think she might have a video tutorial, but um, I just looked it up. Can I get through my pile while you finish your row? Okay. It's not easy to show stuff when you're mid-row anyway. Um, so I have washed it and blocked it. I do feel an end in there, but it's worked in. I just didn't want to trim it until I washed and blocked it because I didn't know if I wanted to uh, stretch it more aggressively for my head. Um, I think I used the same size needle all the way through because I wanted the brim to be a little more loose for, the, for um, slouch. I do want to put a faux fur pom-pom on it. I think I might do one that's like black and gray together. I don't know yet, so I haven't decided. But I've been wearing the heck out of this one, so it's got just that slight little bit of slouch to do a little hoobity doo And I think with a pom-pom, that's going to be perfect. Um, so that's what it looks like on. I love this color with my eyes. So a weep sweater might have to be in my future. But, oh, yeah, so Megwin wants to look at the trees. So that's the Sparkling Cider Hat by Volenvine. She does have a cowl going on right now. I can't remember if it ends the beginning of January. I believe it does. Um, so you probably don't have time to knit one at this point. But go knit it, guys, because it's an amazing pattern. And I really loved it. It was a lot of fun to knit. Um, and Kristen's mohair is not at all scratchy. Like, I didn't... This is right on my forehead, and it feels amazing. And after washing and blocking it, it feels even better. So I washed it in some tuft woolens. I just soaked it for a while, and then I went like this. Which I got that tip from Amy, who used to be part of the uh, Knitting in Circles podcast. And she's Froggy Monkey on Instagram. Um, I got a lot of good tips from her. But when it's wet, you can just kind of spin it on your hand and then lay it out. And it helps, like, open up this top part of the hat. Here you go, Liz. You can lift it now. Oh, now I do. Yeah, and then, like, the bead is the top of the tree. Um, so then we'll get into colorwork mittens. So I was knitting mittens for um, Skein Deer's year-long mid-along challenge, and I did complete the challenge, so it was to knit six pairs, I kept saying five all throughout the year, but six pairs of colorwork mittens or fingerless mitts in adult sizes, and I knit almost seven pairs, um, so I was able to enter something into her cow, which I'm pretty excited about. So you can tell from, I knit two colorwork hats, and then six pairs of colorwork mittens and a sweater with some colorwork on it. So it definitely was the year of colorwork. And as I said, I'm almost done with a pair of mittens for my sister, but not quite. So I'm up to like the thumb gusset part of it. It's not actually a thumb gusset. It's, well, it's sort of an afterthought thumb with gussing, whatever. This. I'm up to like here. On the second mitten. And now I my scarf to be bracelet. Okay, that's fine. Whatever works for you. Um, so they're not in any particular order. This is definitely not the order that I knit them in. But it's the order they're in on the pile. So these are the Selbu mittens from the first Selbu Mitten Club. 
by Ellie, who is Skein Deer. Um, and I believe these were the first pattern that she released before the Selbu Mitten Club that gave her the idea for doing one. Um, so these are knit out of Tahoe from Voyager Yarns in white and gray. I got this yarn from Tuesday morning. It was like $3 a ball. So I have pretty much every color that it comes in. Um, Cause I stocked up, it's just hundred percent wool and it does pretty good color work. Um, you can tell from these that I hadn't really figured out the idea of color dominance yet. So I think I was just switching which um, yarn I was holding in my left hand on this mitten and this mitten I did not. So that's interesting. Um, I do knit my color work two-handed. This is also not blocked, so it doesn't look as good as this one. But even if I blocked it, that's not going to come to the fore like this. So interesting. But they're warm. They're comfy. Here's the palm of each of them. And I like that Ellie's mittens... She matches the pattern for the thumb to the palm. So it's very seamless going into it. Um, the second pair are the Naya mittens. And these are knit out of superwash yarn. But they were yarns that I had in my stash and they are DK weight. So the green one is um, mint chocolate chip from No Makers. It's No Makers Scruffy Gnome Mommy, DK. Yeah. Look, it's so tangled. Okay, just stop. You're not going to untangle it that way. Did you finish your row? Yeah. Then give it to me because you can just take your other needle and pull it through. That's the problem. It's on your cord. No amount of you shuffling the yarn around is going to fix that you have a loop on this needle and you've now tied it into a knot with all of your pulling got to stop and look at where the problem actually is. So now, I don't know what you've done. There you go. Well, one, oh, oh my God. Yeah, you're going to have to rip out that row because you have a loop that's stretched all the way across multiple stitches. See, you just, you like knitted with the tangle rather than knitting with your yarn. There you go. You don't have to rip out the whole thing though. So you take the stitches that were already, so you take the loops that were already stitches and put you, them on the needle. And I'm just pulling it back. I pulled back what you knit with that weird tangle. Stitching a stitch. Okay. There you go. So now you need to finish knitting across those couple of stitches. So it's just because you got tangled and... I'm so you... mad. Okay. I don't want to mess up. Well, I don't like messing up. then you should stop knitting right now. And you should stop doing any other crafts because... I like knitting. Well, then you're going to mess up sometimes. You just have you to be okay up? with it. Oh yeah, I've ripped out whole sweaters before. What? Yep. Yeah, you just have to be like, whatever. It makes me mad for a little while, but you know, ultimately I just get on with are it. There, are there any people in the world that never mess up? No. It's all about how do you deal with when you fail or when things don't turn out just how you want to turn them out, right? Because then you deal with the disappointment and you move on. When does anything ever go exactly as you Oh, I don't know. I think Never. that, yeah, you just try to make the best plans you can and adapt when stuff goes awry. You just try to bring it back onto plan. All right. So these are the Naya mittens. Like I said, um, the creamy yellow is Madeline Tosh, Tosh DK in, um, Alabaster. And it was really old stash. 
Um, and then, like I said, this is mint chocolate chip, scruffy gnome, DK from No Makers. This one has kind of like a four point flower thingy. And then it has that, again, that continuation of the diamond shape down the I'm a fat knitter. thumb. So I like these. They didn't turn out as long as my other ones because my gauge was different. Um, they're not I'm terrible and they really match my spring jacket, which is a minty green. So I tend to wear these more in the springtime. I will show it in a second. I wear these in springtime because they're not quite as warm as the uh, non-superwash wools. But um, yeah, they're great mittens for a little bit mid-temperature weather. Okay, and Megwin continues her knitting when I remind her. She kind of forgets it exists most of the time. Um, I always remember. Okay, she has done a couple more rows. She's decided that this is going to be a bracelet, not a scarf. Which I get, like, knitting a scarf is not the most fun thing in the world. But really, at this point, the idea is to practice and get the knitting down. And that's what we're trying to do. I'm going to put a flower button on it when it's done. That sounds cool. That's a good idea. All right. And if we get a 3D <clears throat> printer by the time I'm finished with this thing. I'm pretty sure we're not going to get a 3D printer. <laughs> well, maybe. Probably not. <laughs> but if we do, I'm going to print it. They're super expensive, like thousands of dollars. We're not going to get a 3D printer. <laughs> what? It's a possibility. No, it's not. Going to get an oven first. Ah. 3D printers, very low on the priority list. All right, these next ones are on the from the... the priority list. Yes, mm -hmm. Megwin. Um, these are from the Cell Movement and Club 2. They're the only pair I've completed from the current um, club that's running. Mom, Although she's released all the patterns medicine? now. No, it's not time for medicine yet. It'll be when Daddy gets home. It's like four hours and six hours. So it's still a while before you have Tell it. Tell them why you just said that. Okay, so these are the only pair that I've knit out of the second Cell Boom Mitten Club. I also love when you put your hands together that the design continues across. Look at that, Max. Do you see the square in the middle and the diamond on the top? Isn't that cool that she designed them that way? It's like your unicorn socks where you put the feet together and it makes the unicorn. Okay, these are the Evia mittens, and I knit these out of that same um, Tahoe by Vo Voyager Yarns Tahoe in white. I had lots left over. The other color is Universal Yarns in the Bermuda Ombre colorway, and again, that's a color that my mom gave me, so it is a variegated ombre non-superwash yarn. I have not uh, worked in the thumb end on this one yet. So that's kind of what my thumbs look like on the edges when I Pick up the stitches and then I just go back and I duplicate stitch a little bit and make the color work match down So it looks like that when I'm done So close up the hole and then go over it with the two colors This side's not bad my mom's going to exterminate, exterminate. exterminate. <laughs> um, so there's the thumbs. You should make exterminate mittens. There, are, there is a pattern called exterminate. And make it is Daleks. Make exterminate mittens. Okay. Are you done? Okay. Um, so I love how these turned out. I like the ombre effect of having the kind of subtle variegation with the white. And these are the first pair of mittens that I knit. The first, actually, the first pair ever of colorwork mittens that I knit. They are the Mabondin mittens. They are knit in Isle Yarns DK in a natural gray and a crimson color. Uh, this yarn is super warm, so I believe it is wool and spun, 
Uh, but I may be wrong about that. It could be worsted spun. But these are the warmest of my mittens that I made. So these tend to be the ones I actually reach for the most, which is funny because they were the first ones I made. Um, I do have enough of this to reverse the colors and do a uh, main red background with the gray contrasts. And I probably will do that because I, as I said, I really love this yarn. So the pattern on the hand is just a every other stitch. But again, I like the effect and it's got the poinsettias on the thumbs as well. It's really hard to show your thumbs. Okay. Oh, seriously? Okay, why don't you work on that while I finish talking through my mittens? Okay, and my last ones that I actually have physically here are the Flora mittens. These are knit out of Blacker Yarns Classic DK. This is a really affordable yarn and it's really, really warm. <gasps> This is a true wool and spun yarn, so it has a lot of loft to it, but it's not easily um, broken. So these are in purple and mustard are the colors. I really like how they turned out with the yellow flowers. Um, I think these are one of the prettiest pair of color mittens that I've made. So um, these also are from the first Selbu Mitten Club, and I think they were the third pair I knit. I knit them in order, so once I started knitting them, which I started them in January, I knit all the way through the entire collection of all of Ellie's mittens, I think in January and maybe a little bit into February. I was obsessed with color work mittens, so now I have a lot. Here's the palm, and it has a very pretty geometric flower going up the thumb. So I also really love these. So these and the Mabonin are the ones that I reach for when it gets really cold because these are almost completely windproof. They've really um, fold a lot. So not felted, but they've definitely bloomed and filled in all of the holes really, really nicely. So if you're looking for a good DK weight yarn to knit Ellie's designs in and you don't want to spend a lot of money, but you want a good quality yarn, I would say to go with the Blacker Classic DK. I bought mine from the Wooly Thistle. What's Nubani? Mebundin is the name of the mittens. It's a town in Norway that she named them for. So anyway, Flora Mittens, again by Skein Deer. I may branch out and knit not Skein Deer Mittens this year because I do have some mitten patterns from other designers and I've been, um, you know, buying some stuff based on Ellie's recommendations. So I have some from uh, Vinky uh, I have, oh shoot, Megwin, can you go get Bubby's Mittens out of the basement for me? Please, I still have to show those. I finished those this year too, can and I, I forgot. Your stitch? Yes, you can finish your stitch. I have plenty to go through. Okay, I almost forgot about Bubby's mittens because he never wears them, so I've sort of forgotten that they exist. But three Billy goats scrub. The three Billy goats scrub. I'm hoping when uh, it starts to really snow and get super cold, that he'll get over his itchiness factor and wear them because he wants to keep his fingers. But we'll see. So this is the love cowl that I knit for Megwin for her birthday. I made up the pattern, um, but I used the stitch count from the sock head hat and just, you know, put the same amount of ribbing on both sides. It is knit out of Chili Knits yarn. I don't know the colorway, but it's a super fun neon pink with rainbow speckles. And she wears it a lot. Cool like almost every day um, with her coat and stuff. And she has like a white coat with a pink lining that has two parts. So this goes really nicely with that. That's gonna fall over. <laughs> um, while she's getting Joshua's mittens, we'll go on to socks. 
these are not washed so don't judge um, these are some leftovers that I knit into socks Mommy, this is I the blueberry waffle pattern I know but the point is that he has liner mittens so he doesn't have to wear them straight up on his skin they're also super super warm and as they felt up a little bit like that they're gonna become even warmer mom at the end of the podcast can you show them where I've gotten in my sure mittens? just work on getting as far as you can okay. um, so this is the blueberry waffle pattern this is leftover yarn my mom had. There's a gnat that keeps flying in front of me. It's very distracting. Bad daddy. Mm-hmm. Hey, gnat, come over here. Um, me. This dyer was creatively dyed. She doesn't do yarn anymore, but I do still have some in my stash, mostly from my mom. Um, I bought a couple of her sock yarns, but uh, my mom gave me some of her worsted weight yarn as well. I ran out, though, on the toe. Um, so I just grabbed some somewhat coordinating yarn from my stash, and this is inside of the shoe anyway, so nobody will see it. It's a gnat invasion. I think they're in the plant. Okay, and then the mittens that I knit for Joshua that are color work are the um, Book and the Bruce mittens. Book and the Bruce. Book and the Bruce, I think is how you pronounce it. But that hey, means we got our name in a knitting project. No, it's Please. it's Norwegian again. So it's three billy goats scruff. So there's the three billy goats. There's they're Big walking over goat. the bit bridge. Normal billy goat. Teensy billy goat. Yep. There's the bridge they're crossing. Wait, who's that? At the top. Uh, of it's just like a little star or whatever on the top. But it's not on the other one. I forgot to put it on this one. <laughs> But that's good, because then he can tell his left from his right. He could figure it out by the little star. And I also did, there's thumb variations that you can do, so you can use the same thumb on both, but I did a different thumb on each, hoping that that would help him tell his hands apart. And? And the troll is sitting he down in the water, it. waiting for him. I call him an ogre. What you and the there's ogre? the palm and the thumbs. So there's a little house on this thumb, and a little flower on this thumb. They are so stinking cute. It makes me so sad that he doesn't want to wear them all the time because they turned out so cute. Mm -hmm. So Ma, cute. When I'm close up, you can actually see my makeup. I know. I told you it was still there. Okay. And then I've knit this two other like pairs of socks for Megwin, but I only brought one of each, partly because I can't find the mate to it and partly because, well, you don't need to see two to believe me. So this is the first one, because Megwin wants it to be. This is knit out of Knit Picks Bleachy. I think this is the Gummy Bears colorway. And then the uh, heel is a coordinating mini skein that I got from um, a swap for mini skeins. So it's a really nice purple knit with the vanilla bean pattern. This one is knit out of the uh, Regia, or sorry, my first Regia in the Baby Smiles line. Um, and that I use that same coordinating skein for uh, contrasting toe and heel. So the mini skein was enough to do heels on two pairs of socks and toes on one pair. Um, so those are all the socks that I knit for Megwin. And now we're into the sweaters. So I knit four sweaters this year, um, and I hope next year to be able to knit at least that many. I'd like to knit six if I can, um, but I'd be happy if I knit another four. This may cut off because of time. So my first one, freshly washed and blocked, is my Zweig pullover. This is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter and I knit mine out of an undyed um, BFL Yak Silk Blend. Um, and it was from No Makers, so she had what she called garage sales, where she would put things in the shop that um, 
either she had excess of or just decided not to carry. So she had a bunch of this yarn and I think I got six skeins of it. I believe I used like two on this sweater. So I definitely have enough to make another sweater and this yarn is pure heaven. So I definitely will make another sweater and I might make one just all in this really beautiful yarn. It's this natural kind of grayish um, brown color and it's so amazingly warm. It's very light, but it's very, very warm. And I think that's because of the yak. Um, but yeah, like after wearing it for, I've worn this a lot and it has very little pilling. It's mostly around the armpit that it has pilling. Um, but yeah, then my contrasting color is um, Hedgehog Fibers in the teacup colorway. Um, one thing about the BFL Yak Silk is that it's kind of thin. I would call it a light fingering. So that's why I paired it with Hedgehog Fibers because I also think that Hedgehog Fibers is a light fingering weight yarn. Um, I'm really glad that I did the little cable crosses. I honestly thought that I knit full sleeves, but these end up being three quarters sleeves when I have it on. They kind of pull up and they end up being more like three quarter length sleeves, which is fine because as I said, it's very, very warm um, because of the yak. So that was sweater number one. And I wore that as my Indian Tangled sweater. Sweater number two is my first So Faded sweater. This one is in four colors of Bad Wolf Girl Studios yarn. The first one is His Owl. Oh, sorry, they're all Harry Potter inspired. So the first one is His Owl, um, meant to represent Hedwig. The second one is Gringotts. The third one is Padfoot. And the fourth Padfoot. one is the Leaky Cauldron. That's the name of uh, Sirius Black's like dog form. Remember he calls himself Padfoot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry and it is using the uh, fade technique. I loved this sweater so much that I knit another one and I plan to knit another one this year as well in greens. However, I need to find a fourth green to use because I have three that I think will go really well together, but I'm struggling on what my fourth color will be and I do need four. Um, so yeah, I did not modify the pattern at all. Um, I. Oh, oh yes I did. I added waist shaping. Just very subtle waist shaping. And I actually made notes for that in my pattern page on Ravelry. So if you want to do the same, um, you can go and check my notes. Um, but essentially I just used the same numbers as for my honey pullover um, by Amy Miller and it worked out really nicely. So it's just, just pulls it in just a very little bit there. And I think I might have knit the bottom ribbing a little bit longer than the pattern called for just because I have a very long torso as established in my fiber friends tag because my torso is like the same size as my husband's who is a six foot tall guy. Uh, but I have very stubby legs. <clears throat> this was my second so faded that I knit and this one I went for the full sleeves. So this is knit out of a mishmash of yarns, some that I had full skeins of, some that were leftovers from other projects. So there's five colors in this one. The first one is uh, Peep Blue Fields in the Cobbler colorway. The second one is Hedgehog Fibers Monarch. This was leftovers from my exploration station. The third one is Angry Orchard from Volenvine Yarns in the Volca colorway. That was a pretty deep stash. This one is um, Adelaide Cottage in the Lorelei's Dream colorway and on the Platinum Twinkle base. So it is my only sparkle. And then the last one is Volenvine Yarns in the Alchemy colorway. And this one was from her Strange Brew Yarn Club. So when I got this yarn, um, I actually had the other four colors planned to put together and I was looking for a fifth one 
And when this came in the mail, I was like, oh, that's it. It's the rest of my fade. So peach, so faded. And this was my Ryan Beck sweater. And it is very warm and nice. And I think my uh, green one that I want to make, I probably will do full sleeves because I like having the full sleeves. But I don't know because the three-quarter sleeve lets me use it more of the year than I can use it three seasons out of the year. So it's a struggle. The struggle is real, guys. The final one was actually my first sweater that I completed in 2018. And it's the one that kind of started it all for the Stasher Shelf Challenge. So I had a really old issue of interweave knits that had a bunch of sweaters in it that I wanted to knit. Um, Just a bunch of tiny, but look. Let me see. It's a pixel Joshua. Oh, it's so cute. It's really cute. I'm going to hold it up. It took a bunch of tries. There's a picture of Joshua right about there. there. Yeah. It looks like he's in a little feedy pajamas. Because he is. Cute. I love it. You need to add some cute eye features. You always draw the best cute eye. Maybe a really sharp pencil. If it was super sharp, you probably could do it. Okay, so this is the Feather Nest Raglan by Amy Miller. It was my absolute favorite sweater designer. I knit it out of Knit Picks Full Circle, worsted. Of smiling babies. Okay. When smiling babies lie. Yeah. This, uh... Yarn is amazing. I have sung its praises many a time. I wish Knit Picks would bring it back. It is a recycled yarn. It's 100% wool, um, just from leftovers of the milling process, and then they kind of blend them all together. So this is in the Cardinal colorway. So it's a nice um, bluish red, but it's showing up really bright red because my light is kind of crap today. Um, so it has short rows in the back of the neck so you can see the ribbing is really short in the front but very tall in the back which makes it really nice because it doesn't ride up on your neck um it has built-in integrated raglan shaping and this really pretty um wavy pattern the sleeves have that same um like the Mommy, my ears are hurting again. Okay. Maybe you should lay down or change your position. Megwin has an ear infection she's fighting off, so she's been having some ear pain. So you can see how it kind of comes converges towards it and then you work this line of straight stitches all the way up underneath of the arm. But yeah, I really love it. This is the one that I reach for if I'm cold. This is the one I put on because it's very warm, but it's soft. Um, like I said, it's just 100% wool. Talking about how you love yourself. I'm talking about how I love this sweater. Talking about how you love yourself and how you knit. I, I just love how I knit this sweater because it's really nice. I just followed the pattern. Um, I wore this to an outdoor thing. Um. And I didn't have a coat on. I just had like a long sleeve shirt underneath of it. And it was really warm enough. So it is very nice warm yarn. So if you can get a hold of um, Knit Picks Full Circle. They made a bulky and a worsted hey, on a D-stash. I definitely recommend it. Because it is really nice affordable like yarn. She's not, but she wants to learn. So that is all of the stuff that I knit in. No, it's not. I have one more pair of colorwork mittens that I knit and I gave them to Kristen for her birthday gift last year. Um, they are the Cavello mittens um, and they were the last pattern in the Selbu Mitten Club that was first. I knit them out of Blacker Yarns Classic DK in olive and light blue. I'm using the inverse of that for my sister's mittens that I'm knitting. I did ask Kristen to send me a picture because I needed it for my entry into the year-long mid-along. So she was kind enough to send me a picture. So I will insert that photo here.
and um, I was very happy with how they turned out. She said that they fit great, and judging from my own flora mittens, I'm sure that they are warm. I uh, do, 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 do. actually the olive is Blacker Yarns West Country Tweed DK, so it's a tweedy yarn, and then the contrasting don't color. Don't you know what tweedy? Yep, is? yeah is the light blue and that's just blacker yarns classic DK. My final 2018 object, I forgot all about it but I've worn it a ton, is my washed out shawl by Hohi Locatelli. This is knit in, yes it does still have ends, and yes I have worn it because it's so long that these kind of tuck in, so I think I have two more sets of ends I need to weave in. This is in Volenvine Yarn Flitzed, in the Evil Queen colorway, the Amarin colorway, I believe that one's also blitzed, yes, and the Moondrop colorway from Moonstone Dye Works. And I think that Tommy just uh, dyed some of this recently for her shop. It is a beautiful, beautiful color, and you should get some. This shawl is gigantic and super warm and amazing. So that is truly my final object for 2018. So that is all of the items that I've knit for 2018 and I'm pretty proud of all of the stuff that I've completed. So I think I had a good productive year and I'm hoping this year to knit a bunch of sweaters, socks for Josh and Megwin. And I'm gonna finish a pair of socks for me, but um, I have a lot of socks, so I feel like I don't really need any more. Um, so I am going to stop it here and then I will film a separate segment. Um, so I will be back. And then I will show what I hope to knit in 2019. So my yarn nine. It's gonna be and a thing. Also my knitting. And also my one's knitting. You ready? Uh, actually, I can't be sure first. Looks like you're losing a stitch right there. No, I'm not. Okay. Okay. So my yarn nine. I had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've got seven, eight, and then one of them, oh, nine, okay, yep, got nine. All right, so first up that I dropped on the floor, okay, I'm going to do, um, this one I think I know what it'll be, but I wanted to knit the Guthrie sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And I want to use this skein of county yarn. I can't get the tag out to show you what, tell you what the colorway is, but it's essentially rainbow. It's a rainbow. Hey, guys, mom's turning into a unicorn. Right, so I have to have a rainbow sweater. And it's a gigantic, huge, as big as my head. She's not really turning skein into a unicorn. Of yarn. She's getting older. Okay. Um, so this is going to be my contrast color, and then my main color will be um, Blacker Yarns Classic Wool in just a gray color. So I think that'll be really pretty to not detract from the Mommy, rainbow, and this is a gradient, a rainbow gradient. So I have um, five skeins of the gray, and then my really huge skein of county. Megan wants me to show her progress so far on her knitting. How many rows have you knit? I don't know. Oh boy, honey. Can you count rows? Uh, this one is like you have it from down below. That's... Okay, hang on. You can move around with that one. Yeah, hey, let's what you see. Doing? I'm going to try to fix it. I'm going to go back and figure out what's wrong with it. I think you may have done a yarn over. I'm going to unknit my progress. Well, Meg wouldn't. I don't know what's happening there. Got to fix that. My mom is driving me crazy. Good try, though. Oh, see, they're all done. Okay. There. All done. 
specifically said all done. So there. All so there obviously all done. Mm hmm So that means that we just have the amount of time till they drive home to finish. But you can go record your stuff up in your room. Stop putting your finger in your ear. Okay, here's the progress she's made. Two rows, which is pretty good. There you go. Guthrie by Caitlin Hunter. Me like a maid. I am. The one thing that I make you do is terrible. I'm a terrible person. Okay, and this one I also know what it is because um, I actually searched for a pattern to go with the yarn. So for now, unless I don't like that plan for some reason, these will become a breathing space by Vera Valamaki. However, these yarns need to be together. Um, so it is two skeins of Shimmer Sock from the Yarn at Home Mom in the charcoal colorway. And these two skeins of Volan Vine Yarns from the Lost Reindeer Club. This is Blitzen and Dasher. So this will be the main color and these will be the uh, contrasting is stripes. Is No, I don't think so. I think I had the other reindeer but not a Rudolph. So it's eight reindeer minus Rudolph. Gotta get on that, Kristen. We need a Rudolph. Is there any such thing as a Rudolph? Well, it depends on if you believe in Santa or not. No, like a Rudolph in yarn. Is there any such oh, thing as that? Oh, I'm sure someone probably has a Rudolph colorway. But anyway, I think those will go really well together. These will what? draw what? out hey, the Rudolph's speckles. Um, so yeah, I think those will be really nice together. And I think the breathing space is a really pretty sweater. So... The next one that I want to knit up this year, for now, the tentative plan is an unfinished business. Um, I kept saying in my last podcast that I got four of these. I did not. I got three of them. So um, I have, what is that, 463 yards in each one. So it's definitely enough for a sweater. Uh, the unfinished business is a design by Melissa Seshwari, and it is like... Um, just unfinished rolling hems on everything and it's a top-down raglan loosely knit gauge sweater and I think it'll be really pretty with these um, but I definitely want to knit these into a sweater and I would like to do it this year this is the Anne of Green Gables colorway from the Yarn at Home Mom and it is amazing and I think it'll make a gorgeous sweater very one of a kind um, the next one that I want to knit is my Kinky Boots. And someone actually went and watched Kinky Boots and they loved it. More people need to watch that movie. It is an underrated gem. So good. Um, so this is bright, beautiful red. And it is sparkly. So it's on her shimmer base. I think it's called shimmer. Um, it's unlabeled. But this was a sweater quantity that she happened to have. Um, so there was one skein that she listed. And uh, it was in DK. And someone else grabbed it. And I was like, oh, I would have loved a sweater. And she said, well, I actually had one I was keeping for myself. But we'll make it happen. So I'm going to make these into a poet pullover from the Lane magazine. Um, three skeins should definitely be enough for that. And I think it would make the most beautiful lacy Christmas sweater. So this will be my Christmas sweater for 2019. It's going to happen, people. It's going to happen. The next one, it's not all here. I think I have one more skein somewhere else. This is a sweater's quantity that I bought um, for my wool anniversary. So your seven-year anniversary, one of the traditional presents is wool. So when my husband and I had our seven-year anniversary, I bought myself a sweater's quantity of Madeline Tosh. Um, what is this base? Vintage. In the Baltic colorway. Which is one of my favorite blues ever. Um, so I'm going to make a Hamilton sweater out of this by Josie Paquin. Um, I've wanted that sweater since it came out. And I think this will make the most beautiful version of it. And it's a more loose fitted garment anyway, so I'm going to knit it with some negative ease, but with the super wash it should grow enough to be just a slightly positive ease garment. And it'll be really pretty. 
So kind of like a grown-up sweatshirt, if you will. Um, and I'll be happy to get this out of my stash because it will be our 12-year anniversary this month. So this has been marinating for about five years. So it's time. It's time for it to get knit up into something. And I have it in this very fancy yarn storage bag, a.k.a. King Sheets duvet cover set bag. But hey, keeps it safe. If I have time, there is a sweater from the Swoon Main book that I would like to knit this guy into. I think just this one might be. No, I have three of these. I think I only need two of them. Um, they're each 500 yards. This is Country Road from Briar Rose Fibers. I don't know what the colorway is because she never marks her colorways, but my mom gave me um, three of these ginormous honkin' skeins, and I'm going to make it into a very simple cardigan that's long um, with some nice wooden buttons, I think. That's what I imagine in my head. Um, but I think that this will be really pretty and if I have time I will knit this into a sweater but this is a little bit um, lower of a priority this one I definitely will cast on very soon because Tommy from the um, Moonstone Dye Works and why am I blanking on the name of her podcast? I feel really terrible. She's Dynamite Trujillo on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Oh my god. Shit. I don't remember the name of her podcast. I'm so sorry, Tommy. Why? Why? I'm having New Year's brain where I stayed up till midnight and have not got enough sleep from fever ridden children. Um, so this will be the Professor Meow sweater. This is Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. It is so fluffy and soft. Squirrel Pie Productions. Oh my God. Anyway, Tommy from Squirrel Pie Productions is having a podcast, or a podcast, a cow to learn something new in 2019. So I'm gonna do Intarja and I'm gonna knit the Professor Meow sweater. It's happening, it's gonna happen. It's January and February, so this will be cast on super duper soon. It is a bulky weight yarn, so it shouldn't take super long, and hopefully it will be relatively simple to learn in Tarsha. I got two more. The next one will be my Jinx Yarns. Comfy Fade. Comfy fade, comfort fade cardi. I think it's comfort fade cardi. And I've shown these yarns before. This is Jinx Yarns in um, Part of Your World, Land of Glaze, The Cake is a Lie, and Never Ender. I want to do this. This needs to happen, hopefully for Rhinebeck next year because I met Laura at Rhinebeck this year. She is super sweet and I would like to show her my sweater next year. So hopefully this will be Rhinebeck sweater 2019. And it has to be a comfort fade because that's what I bought the yarn for. So this sort of is a make nine kind of because I feel like I've got everything picked out for what I'm gonna make these things into, but I could change the pattern. And then I would like to make, this has been in my stash for quite a while as well, the Goldfinch shawl from Andrea Mowry as well. Um, it calls for three or four colors of yarn. Um, but I got three colors. I think I only have three colors. Yeah, three colors of alpaca. And this is Prime Alpaca from an alpaca farm. Um, 
that's in Ohio. So I bought this at the wool gathering. It's called Morning Meadow Sundries. So these are the three colors I'm going to use and it's going to be a natural um, palette, but I think it'll be super warm and it'll go very nicely with my coat and it'll be kind of heavy um, and floofy and soft. And I think that'll just be an amazing, huge wrap. Um, and then the final one, which is going to cut out on me because I'm almost out of space, is the Noel Pullover. And I'm going to use my Cormo and my Cormo Cross that I bought at Rhinebeck. I've already cast it on, so that is definitely what it's going to be. This is what I have so far.